Hey, cheers guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. So this video is not clickbait. I actually purchased six Baofeng UV5Rs for a very specific reason. And no, it's not taking the place of my Yaesu VX6R. I know that I could buy 10 of these units for the price of this one, but this guy has been a tank for the last few years. And in fact, I have a EDC one, a trail one, and one for the EMP bag. But today we're gonna talk about my top three reasons for picking an inexpensive $22 set of radios for SHTF or whenever stuff goes sideways. So in general, the amateur radio community has a healthy distrust of these radios. And to some extent, I share their beliefs that these are not the greatest radios in the world, but that doesn't mean they do not have value. They certainly do. And the way that I like to look at this is what value does this provide to me at the price point that it commands? And each of these radios I picked up for $22. In fact, my first radio was a Baofeng UV5R. It's actually still kicking, it's from 2017. I think at that time I paid 25 or 30 bucks. I've got a few extra things on it. Now I don't use this radio anymore. I did quickly grow out of it. But the point is you need to take a look at what meets your needs, your budget and your environment. And in my particular case, this is a great radio as a starter radio. And in fact, my brother-in-law just got his tech license and I recommended a Japanese radio to him. And then later on, he found out that I had one of these under the seat in the car. He's like, why didn't you uh, recommend the $20 radio? I said, well, you're gonna grow out of it pretty quickly. And that's on me. I probably should have recommended what I started out with. And that was the Baofeng UV5R because if you turn out not to like the hobby, it's not for you. It is really, uh, not a whole lot of uh, loss on your end financially. So that's kind of reason number one why I bought it is to potentially loan these out to people or give them out that are getting into the hobby to help further uh, off-grid comms and preparedness. So trying to be a good citizen in that respect. And now I have six of these at my disposal to help kind of further on or further on the legacy of amateur radio. So reason number two is to have something in my wife's vehicle, which usually is not comms ready. And if for some reason I don't have my everyday carry radio with me, it would be nice to be able to have some inexpensive radios in the car. And in fact, when I went to go check her go bag that I put together about four years ago, it turns out that I had pulled out the Baofeng radios that were in there and I actually don't even know where they are. So the cool thing about this is I can grab a couple of these guys with the batteries fully charged, put a reminder on my calendar to maybe charge them every couple of months, drop them in a small bag like my antenna bag here, drop in a couple of even the rubber duck antennas that it comes with. And basically I have a very lightweight package where I have the ability to have comms with me. Now, the other great thing about this is that I'm looking at a $45 total investment here. So if the vehicle is broken into, or we leave the vehicle out in the summer with 140 degree temperature on the inside and something happens to the radio, I'm not gonna be upset because it's not a $250 radio. Now, what I typically like to do for the vehicles too, as a backup, because sometimes these batteries can uh, get discharged. I'm not a huge fan of the DC adapters for your cigarette adapter. What I always buy for all my radios is the ability to run double A batteries. So both of these will also have the double uh, A battery tray. This will take five double A batteries and give you roughly 7.5 volts. So it's a really great way to have backup comms. And I can think of one scenario where we may have to use this. Let's say that the cellular network goes down and we need to separate in her vehicle. We have the ability now to have some short range comms capabilities. And I've got mine programmed identically to my VX6. I did a full video on my approach to how I program these radios. So take a look at that video. It might answer a lot of questions because we're not gonna dive into programming here. But uh, among other things, I have my five business frequencies and then we're not gonna get into the legalese around FRS, GMRS and MERS on these radios, but I also do have those programs. So reason number two is as backup disposable radios that I don't mind if the vehicle is broken into, well, that would suck, but uh, I'm not gonna be up or down 500 bucks if I have two of these sitting in the car. And if for some reason the elements get to it, again, not too concerned, I'll just pick up another couple of $22 radios. And as much as I do knock the Chinese radios, my um, first radio has been under my car seat since 2017. And other than the battery pretty much being completely useless, 
uh, it's still kicking. Uh, the screen is actually having some issues, but other than that, it still works. In fact, I did a 39 mile uh, contact into a repeater uh, site uh, north of me and ended up talking to my buddy Mike 200 miles out through our linked repeater network using this very radio just by switching out the uh, AA battery pack, manually programming in that repeater site, and we were back up and running. So an expensive way to have some backup comms in your primary or secondary vehicle. All right, so reason number three, these are intended to be handed out to my community. And this is intended for when stuff really goes sideways. So I wanted to solve a couple problems. I actually went out and also purchased the six bank gang charger. And the reason for it is so that I could have this at my operating location, at my home, fully charged, ready to go. I will take ownership, kind of filling that uh, radio operator role, that RTO role, and essentially cloning and programming all of these identically. Now, I'm not gonna give it the full set of frequencies I typically use uh, for my wife and I in the vehicle or the one that uh, I use for everyday usage, but I plan to put about five to no more than 10 frequencies on here and have a little laminated card with how the neighbors can use these. And again, these are probably not gonna be licensed operators, but if stuff goes completely crazy, like a wildfire or something that requires evacuation, some rioting, I would prefer to be able to hand out these radios. I'll probably put them on my business frequency so we're a little bit more uh, compliant with the rules there. Uh, but basically, they won't have to worry about charging these. They won't have to worry about programming them. It'll just be some simple instructions on a single business card that basically shows you how to turn it on and select the channel. So really straightforward. And again, the area of operation will probably be well under a mile. In fact, I'm looking more at about a half mile kind of radius between the neighbors that I have very good relationships with. And uh, yeah, that's the best we can do. I also did purchase uh, for the neighbors in addition to uh, these radios, I did purchase the USB charging battery pack, the extended battery pack. It looks about to be this length here, the longer battery pack, but then they can use any of those little battery packs they get for their cell phones to charge it as well. So guys, really, this was just a quick video to tell you, yeah, I'm not a fan of Chinese radios, not a real big fan of the UV5R, but it has utility at the price point of around $20, and there are lots of different applications where you probably don't want to have your more expensive radio, um, you know, or buy multiple copies of your more expensive everyday radio for things like backup in the vehicle and to hand out to your neighbors. So, the content on this channel is going to be shifting a little bit this year. I'm really concerned about the political scene. So last, or actually this morning, we just did a video on encryption on the Buy Me A Coffee side. Uh, I went ahead and changed my whole plan for videos to talk about, hey, I know I'm not a fan of these radios, but I think these radios are valuable, especially with tight budgets these days. I think everybody should take a look at having some level of backup comms, regardless of what that is. It doesn't have to be a Baofeng UV5R. It could be whatever radio technology uh, you feel would be great for your use case. With that said, guys, appreciate all of you, especially all the newbies that have joined in. And uh, stay tuned for more practical content. I'm the Tech Prepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared. Actually, guys, if you're still with me, I forgot one thing. One cool thing I found out about this six bank charger is that it has a barrel connector. So typically it's going to be charging in my office off of AC mains, but it actually uses a barrel connector and it takes 12 volt DC input. So I can actually use my normal batteries that I used to back up the shack and actually just take that barrel connector, plug it in. And if there is a grid outage, I can actually now charge all six at three amps or three, yeah, three amps and basically be able to charge these in a pinch. So I don't have to worry about individually uh, finding, you know, six USB cables and ports for that. I can just take one cable, plug it in directly behind me into my battery and we're off to the races. All right, now I'm gone. Cheers all.